Back to 29 minutes. Oh, wait, did I change the time? Right? Son of a gun. Did I set out notifications got the wrong time? I think we're live now, actually. I think it's supposed to notify people at 5.30, not 5. Darn it. There's nothing I can do to change it. All right, we are now live. <laughs> anyway, welcome everyone. Thank you guys for joining in. I'm not sure if the stream said it was set to go at 5.30 or 5, but thank you guys uh, for jumping in here. For those of you that are new here, my name is Josh. Every single week I make videos sharing tips, ideas, and stories teaching you how to be your best self. Um, sorry if, if it, it was a bit confusing. Um, hopefully people will jump in at the 5.30 part. Yeah, I set the stream originally to be half an hour later for last time, and then I forgot to set it to this time. I just cloned it. Anyway, we're here now live. Guys, thank you so much for being here. I want to give shout outs to all the early birds in the live stream. Now, this is going to be a different type of live stream. Um, if you guys notice on the top uh, top over there, there should be a donate button. That is for something called the Innocence Project. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. But before I get into that, I want to give shout outs to all the early birds in here. So if you're someone that's just tuning in, just jumping on the live stream, hit the little, actually just type in the chat right now, say hi, uh, jump in, and I'll give you guys a shout out. Let's see who we got here. Grayson the Goosebump Kid is in here. Brady is in here. Uh, Yancey is in here. Uh, Livy says hi. Allegro says, "Well, no, it started early yet. Yeah, thank you for pointing out, Allegro. Like I said, I, I forgot to set the time, so hopefully people will jump in in the next half hour. But you guys will get the notification now, which is cool." Charles says, "Hi, how are? Yeah, hi, how? Hi, how are you?" <laughs> Iceman says, "Hello, everyone." Stuart says, "When and where would you like the feedback?" Yeah, Stuart, jump into the chat and just uh, share your thoughts as I kind of talk through points. Uh, Jay, Jay Surge says, "Hi." Charles Play says, "What's up?" Livy says, "I'm so confused. It's three. I know. I apologize, guys. <laughs> I'm throwing a lot of people off here. Nigel says, "Hey." Uh, Yancey says, "Hey, Josh." Cheesy says, "Hey." Sam, Sam Leach, Jalen's in here. Brady's in here. Julian, uh, Jacqueline, Adriano, Scott is in here. Jeremiah P Patterson, uh, Georgia H. Uh, David Dave Video Studio Austin is in here. Thank you guys all so much for being in here. Like I said, apologize for the confusion. If I started the stream early, I forgot to change it to 5 p.m. my time. So a lot of people probably thought it was going to be 5:30 p.m. So thank you for being here early. Um, so what I want to do in this stream is going to be a little bit different. I want to walk you through some of the different points and really just talk about what's going on in the world today. I think that. Um, there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of resentment, there's a lot of confusion, um, and there's a lot of change that's happening. You know, so much has happened in the last week in regards to political policy, in regards to the conversations people are having, in regards to just where our focus is, you know, and I want to kind of walk through some of the ideas of what's going on, share some things that I've learned in the last week or so. And I've done a lot of reading, a lot of watching videos, a lot of hearing interviews, hearing stories, uh, and I feel like... I'm starting to get a better sense of things that I never really understood prior. Uh, maybe I had a vague understanding of what was taught in school, and now I feel like I have a deeper understanding of um, some of the challenges that exist today. So I want to walk through some of those challenges there. Now, like I said, guys, um, instead of giving a super chat, if any of you wanted to donate a super chat, instead of the super chat, there is a fundraiser set up there on the side. That is for the Innocence Project. Let me pull up the Innocence Project here. So the Innocence Project is uh, uh, it's an organization that aims to help provide any kind of service that people who are incarcerated wrongfully or you know or uh, you know any kind of unjust imprisonment uh, that someone let's say is uh, put in jail but they they just don't have money to pay for DNA tests or they've received uh, they they put in jail but the DNA test was messed up and they still went into jail so it helps provide different services like DNA tests. Uh, you know, afterwards, DNA test helps provide adequate lawyers, helps provide, um, you know, kind of deeper understanding of different people's cases and situations going on. It's a project that's really set on helping people who are innocent that are incarcerated get through the legal system because the legal system is a major hurdle for so many people. And there are lots of people that are wrongfully incarcerated, charged of wrong crimes. And this organization is meant to really just kind of help those people have a fighting chance against the system. So I'll talk more about the Innocence Project a little bit, little bit later on as, after I walk through these points. But um, as I kind of address things here, um, and I mentioned to Stuart, I mentioned to all of you guys, uh, ask questions, share feedback. If I say something that you disagree with, 
say it in the chat. If you say something that, if I say something that you agree with, share your own feedback and your own perspective. Like I said, I'm no expert in any of these things that I'm going to talk about today, but I just want to share it from my perspective, the things I feel like I've learned. So I want to move into the first part of this, which is basically the confusion element. There's a lot of confusion going on in the world right now. Um, a lot of people are upset, right? So the political change could cause for causing for some people to take down statues, to you know burn down stores. There's a lot of momentum happening, uh, and there's a lot of confusion around it as well. So um, let's jump in now for, for, from this question: Why are people so upset? Let's jump into kind of the first real point here that I want to address. I think that. Some of the reasons why there's a lot of um, just kind of energy floating around, right? People are all up in arms are for, for a few things, right? There's a lot of mixed messages about the severity of the pandemic. Now, I just read a, I just read an article earlier today that there's been a huge outbreak, uh, higher numbers of cases and people that have been infected with it. So a lot of people feel like the pandemic is just over, right? They feel like, oh, okay, you know, like stores are opening, I can go back to normal, but there's a lot of mixed messages there. Not a lot of people have the information that they need. Um, another piece of that is unemployment is at nearly 20%. Guys, um, and this is, this is from an article that I read earlier, you know, unemployment, uh, it's like there's only been a few points in history in the 20s or so that the unemployment was this high. And if you think about that, that's a lot of people without jobs, without the ability to uh, pay their bills, provide an income for themselves. There's a lot of stress and a lot of struggle on people's plates. And that can lead to a lot of uh, uh, unrest amongst people. Uh, another thing that I think most of you guys know about is that there's a push for justice for George Floyd among many other people that have been wrongfully killed um, and wrongfully assaulted in this country. George Floyd's case, as many of you guys know, um, George Floyd was killed by the police officer. Um, the police officer had placed his knee up. I'll put my camera on. Um, the police officer had placed his knee on George Floyd's neck for, I believe it was around eight or nine minutes or so. And, you know, it ended up being fatal to him. And because of that, there was a lot of unrest. A lot of people feel like um, the police to some degree are unchecked and that there's a lot happening where the police officers can kind of get away with things or aren't rightfully charged with it because of their police unions and a lot of stuff happening there. But People, people are starting to realize that, you know, these incidents um, are not isolated incidents. These, these are things that represent a moment that reflects the history of our country, as I've come to learn in the last week and really learning and diving deeper into some of the information. Um, I want to jump back into the other points there. Uh, and the other point is this, there's a lot of racial and economic syst systemic challenges that exist, and a lot of things are being discussed and brought to light. Uh, there's a lot of conversations happening across the world, guys, in America and in other countries. And I think part of the challenge is that a lot of people, uh, the average person, including myself, aren't as knowledgeable as maybe we should be when it comes to these things. I've spoken to a lot of people when I've talked about racial and economic systemic challenges who just flat out say that doesn't exist. Those aren't real. That's not a real thing. You're making it up. Fake news. And like I said, as you look into the history, as you look into the data and to the, the research behind it, you start to see that there's a picture that's being painted. And I want to kind of walk through that paint, uh, walk through that picture a little bit, but I want to jump into the chat and see what some of you guys are saying. Um, I'm sure each and every single one of you has felt some level of unease in the world around you, right? Someone mentioned that 2020 did not start off a good start, and it's true. So uh, I want to do a chat poll here. I want to ask you guys, I want to get your opinion. What's something that you feel um, is constantly on your mind, and it has been since 2020? I'm sure for a lot of you guys, it's the pandemic. I'm sure for some of you, it's um, you know the fact that there's this push for social justice. I'm sure you know, discussing racism is on the table, uh, you know, like there's a lot of issues, a lot of things being talked about, but what do you feel is something that you're constantly thinking about day after day? For myself, one thing I'm thinking about is how can we um, move forward conversation? How can we talk to each other? How can we be more compassionate and understanding? If any of you guys saw my video on Tuesday, I talked about the need for fierce compassion now more than ever. And the idea of fierce compassion is that there's a place for gentle compassion. There's a place to be understanding, kind, care, 
caring and to just be an open listener. And then there's a time for fierce compassion where we need to step up to protect and to help and to honor others by making sure that people aren't tossed to the side, people aren't ignored, people aren't used and abused. And that fierce compassion is in the need to protect others. So I asked you guys here, let's jump in and see what some of you said. Um, um, what's something on your mind, something that you've been thinking about recently, and here's what you guys had to say. Allegro said the pandemic. Um, Emma says, there are people who think that they know more than the president, which is stupid and not right. Yeah, good point, Emma. Uh, Sam Leach says, hey, Josh, I'm having a lot of anxiety recently. I keep thinking that uh, people I care about hate me for my opinions. I can't stop overthinking. What would you advise? That's a good point, Sam. I I'll address that in a second. Uh, Noah says, pandemic and Great Depression 2.0. Hamish says, my life going downhill. Luca says, I feel like we should just leave the fact that it's 2020 out of the picture. Yeah, I mean, like, this is going to be a year we're not going to want to talk about. We're going to be like, oh, 2020, man. Uh, Jalen says, well, it's everything. It's crazy. I didn't think this would happen. Yancey says, hey, Josh. Um, oh, Yancey's asking a, a question about being rude. Hamish says, I'm hating my family. Cheesy says, every day I'm normally thinking about my friends. I talk to them every day. The issue hasn't affected the UK and anywhere other than London. Good point, Cheesy. Scott says, I'm worried about prejudice and discrimination with all the police brutality and pride fall. Yeah, good point. Rage Master says, pandemic and unemployment. Sam Lee says, everything is on my mind. Everything is just so ever overwhelming. Yep, Sam, and I think you kind of summed it up really well there. I think that it is all very overwhelming. And I think that there's a lot of conversations and a lot of movement. People are posting on Facebook. People are posting on Instagram. And one thing I want you guys to understand is that it's important as much as it is to learn and dive into things and, and kind of understand them, it's also important to take steps back as well. That's something people don't often talk about, but it is important because if we consume ourselves with information and news, we're going to feel very overwhelmed. And when we feel overwhelmed like that, we're not really going to be able to take in new information or have conversations because it's going to be harder for us to kind of be open-minded, to listen, to, to be understanding. We're going to be really stuck in a place where uh, we just don't want to know anything because it's just too much for us. So let's move into that next piece here, which is this, guys. What are some of the uh, systemic issues? When we talk about systemic and economic injustices, what are some of the systemic and economic injustices that exist today? Well, I've done a lot of research and I've kind of really dived into what some of the challenges that people face today. And these are some of the ones that I kind of came across. Poverty is a huge, huge issue in this country. There's such a disparity between the super rich and the poor. Um, people are struck with poverty in so many different ways, whether it's access to food, whether it's um, currently now people being unemployed, people having trouble paying their bills, keeping afloat with all the different, uh, you know, like things that they have to cover and pay for, things like wage theft, right? If you think about um, how big corporations like Amazon and Walmart are in some cases paying their employees minimum wage or even lower and having them work long, long hours, having them, you know, have to go to the bathroom in bottles. And, you know, like a lot of people from these companies are protesting and revolting against that. There's been a huge movement there. Uh, lack of housing is, is another one. People not being able to purchase homes, people not being able to get approved for loans, lack of health care. There are so many people, I believe it's 33 million people in this country that don't have access to health care, right? So if they get sick, if they get injured, if, if they catch anything else or develop anything else besides COVID, it's not as simple to just go out there and kind of know that you'll be able to be covered. Mass imprisonment is another huge one, guys. Like America imprisons people at the highest rate compared to anywhere else in the world. So we have such a huge, huge prison population. And that ties into what I was saying before about, um, about the, oh, did it pop up? Oh, sorry. Yeah, the, the Innocence Project, guys. You know, in, the Innocence Project is one way to fight back against that mass imprisonment. Uh, policing is a huge, huge issue. And we see that now. There's a lot of political change happening around policing around how the cops operate, what they do, what's protocol. Uh, crippling debt, guys. People are in massive amounts of debt from things like student loans to credit card debt to uh, medical bills. People are struggling and the wages that they make aren't enough to help them through that debt. Surveillance is a huge one, guys. If you think about post 9-11, 
there was a huge, huge emphasis with things like the Patriot Act in America that put a huge emphasis on surveillance of American people. And this is, you know, um, this is uh, what, what you're doing on your phone, valence happening on people. And it's a, it's a major, major problem that makes the plants. Uh, these are, you know, all these different kinds of plants. You Having access to clean water is something that so many people struggle with. And under-resourced schools, guys, this is another one here. There are so many schools that don't have access to uh, don't have access to proper school books that kids have to travel, you know, miles to get to school where the teachers don't have uh, the right type of education or degrees and the, the quality of education just isn't there. The access to pursue higher education isn't there for everyone. So those are just some some of the systemic problems, guys. And I want to jump in now. I want to get your guys' opinion on this. I've shared a bunch of things from policing to housing issues to Medicare. And I, I want to, you know, like, and Joel makes a good point. I'm going to jump in. If you guys have questions or things you want to ask or like, let's let's have a conversation about these things. I want to know where you guys stand. If you don't really know much about any of it, you can say that in the chat too. Say, hey, I don't really know much about those things. I want to hear where you guys stand. Uh, Zig, Zig, Ziga Kovac says, social relationships, how can people be rude in these hard times? Aren't we supposed to be friendly and supportive to each other? Yeah, I hear, we, I hear we on that. I think that some of the rudeness is heightened because there's a lot of anxiety and tension from all the issues that are, that are happening right now. Uh, Modern Bro says, I'll never find someone in my parents controlling my life. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Uh, Hamish says, I can't believe I'm, I'm late. This is really bad. I'm always on time. Hamish, no problem. There's no such thing as late, man. Hamish says, can't donate. This makes me a bad person. Absolutely not. This does not make you a bad person at all, Hamish. I think the best thing we can do is uh, talk about these things, to learn about this, to share that information. You know, it's not about, it's not always about give money, give money. A lot of it is about being educated and, and being able to push for things in law and to share people's stories when you see that they need to be shared. Let's see, Iceman says, I feel like if the shops and everything started opening again, the virus is going to get worse and everything is going to close again. Yeah, I hear you on that. I mean, there's a lot of hesitation on opening up stores and just going back to normal now. A lot of the research shows that, you know, we're, we're not ready yet. We're not ready for people to just resume normal life. The virus is going to continue to spread. Benji says, no matter what, you guys got, you got to keep moving because if you don't unlock them, them door ahead of you, you won't get anywhere. Imagine your own little car going down a highway and it breaks down. What are you going to do? Fix it. Absolutely, Benji. I think that we do need to take a step back and fix a lot of these problems. Uh, what I shared there were a lot of the systemic issues. And what, is it, what does systemic mean? Well, systemic means that there's a system in place, whether it's healthcare, whether it's education, whether it's policing, whether it's prison, whether it's water access, uh, whether it's access to groceries and foods. What is the system in place that people can live their day-to-day -day lives that they work within, right? So if we say the um, the healthcare system, well, who are the corporations and the companies that offer healthcare plans? They are the system of healthcare that people operate under. So a lot of these systems are broken. A lot of these systems disadvantage certain people. And from my research, from what I've learned, a lot of the disadvantaged people tend to be black people on the other end. A lot of times, in a lot of those things that I mentioned, black people tend to suffer at much higher rates than other racial groups and other groups in general. Uh, a lot of times it's lower income black people that tend to suffer the most. So that's something that we need to we need to really pay attention to as I walk through the rest of the points. Grayson says Black Lives Matter has been going on for years. Yeah, Black Lives Matter started after Trayvon Martin. I forgot what year that was, maybe 2000. I want to say 2015, but I know that's not true. <laughs> it had to have been a different year. But um, yeah, Black Lives Matter stemmed from that. Um, uh, Ziga says, my opinion is that USA should accept proper gun laws. I mean, you shouldn't be able to just go to the store and buy a pistol. Gun weapons are greatly abused by criminals. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of discussion around guns and access to guns. I think a lot of people feel like um, guns are a part of our American right. And then a lot of people look at it more like, yes, that may be true, but... Um, we do have a major problem with guns. There is, you know, mass shootings and there is all these different kinds of issues that, that come about from, from, from guns. Um, Austin says, I don't think mass imprisonment is a problem. A lot of people deserve it. That's a good point, Austin. I think that from your perspective, you feel mass imprisonment isn't a problem, but if you look into some of the data behind imprisonment, in fact, Austin, what I would recommend you do is there's a documentary. Uh, it's from, it's from Netflix, but it's available on YouTube called 13th. 
look at the documentary 13th and you're going to learn a lot about the prison system and you can really see how it's broken. I think mass imprisonment is a major problem because while you, while you feel that a lot of people deserve it, a lot of times people go to jail for victimless crimes. So people who have a little bit of weed or people who uh, had an outstanding warrant for not showing up in court or any of these other types of things. There's a lot of people that are in prison that aren't hurting people or haven't hurt anyone and yet they're still put into the prison system. Iceman says, isn't the virus going to get worse when, when everything starts opening up again? I think that's that's true. It's it's very, very possible that that can happen. All right. Just scrolling through. Stewart says, I disagree. Mass imprisonment is a problem because a lot of innocent and there are some who should be rehabilitated than imprisoned. Yeah. I mean, we can have a whole discussion about prison um, and what's the best way to kind of handle people who, let's say, who commit crimes or get arrested. Should we send them to prison? How long should they be in prison? Are prison sentences right the way that they're set up? Um, if you look at things like the 1994 crime bill in America, that was a tough on crime bill where, you know, there was something called the three strikes law and like all these things, I wish I had the data points to pull up, but I would look into these things if, if you want to learn more about the prison system. Uh, Hamish says black lives do matter. I thought equally was meant to be here. So everyone, uh, so everyone respects colored people. Absolutely, man. Rage Master says, hey, Josh, can you make a video about dealing with unemployment and being laid off and how to do something be and being productive? That's a really, really good point, Rage Master. Um, I, that's definitely something I want to cover. If you were unemployed or you were laid off, what can you really do now? What are some maybe simple or short-term ways to kind of help keep yourself afloat and make a little bit of money? There's a lot of different websites and tools that are available that I'll definitely, <clears throat> I'll definitely cover in a video. Um, Sam Leach says, to be honest, everything that's happened in the past week has made me more mad at the officer. I don't like pointing the finger, but he triggered more chaos than was necessary. Yeah, interesting point there. I think that there definitely has been a spiral uh, that has happened since George Floyd's death. Um, and it definitely has reshaped a lot of the prison, uh, not prison, sorry, a lot of the policing force. So let's move into the next point here, guys. And that is this. There's a lot of conflation going on as well. So people are asking the question, what exactly is going on? I'm hearing things from the president. I'm hearing things from President Trump. I'm hearing things from the news. I'm hearing things from my friends on Facebook. I'm hearing things from, uh, you know, everywhere, Twitter and Instagram. And there's a lot of information being tossed around. But what's, what exactly is going on? So to kind of answer that, guys, these are just some of the things that I've heard people talk about. I've heard people say, and I want to kind of walk through some of them here. So one of the issues that that I take is that, and I think Trump is someone who does this a lot, is there's a lot of conflation of protesters, rioters, and insiders. People believe that protesters, rioters, insiders, they're the same people. And I want to talk more about that. So what is the difference here between those the protesters, the rioters, and the insiders? Well, a protester is someone that feels like, hey, there's, a, there's something that's wrong, something that we want to change, something that we want to fight against and argue for, you know, political change or social change for. That's what protesting is, right? You're protesting against something. Now, a rioter uh, is someone who is destroying in the process of looting, in the process of uh, just feeling anger, raging against the system and fighting back. There's a lot of reasons why people might riot. And I want to ask you guys here, I want to do a chat poll here, guys. I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say. Um, how many of you feel like um, there's a difference between the protesters and the rioters right now? I know some people believe they're all the same. They all just want destruction. And then some people, I, I believe, think also, hold on, I recognize that rioters is a, end up being a small contingent in the mix of the protest, but the protesters have a different a perspective and what they're doing. So do you feel like there's a difference between the protesters and the rioters or do you feel like they're all just one and the same? Uh, I, I want to also include insiders. An insider is someone that is agitating, right? So you might have seen that there are some people that are laying out bricks or are just walking around breaking store windows just for the simple fact, just for the simple sake of doing it or spray painting on buildings. Those are insiders. But I think it's incredibly important for us to understand, the di my perspective, the difference between the protesters and what it is they're fighting for and then the rioters and what it is and why they're doing that. Uh, Grayson says, um, also, I don't know why people hate the president on trying to help this outrage. They never harassed George Bush or Ronald Reagan when they tried to help. 
Grayson, you know, I think that if you look back to George Bush, um, there was a huge, huge protest against him, um, especially, uh, you know, around 9-11 for him going into war. There was a huge, huge, massive movement against George Bush. And Ronald Reagan, it, it was it was similar in, in nature. Ronald Reagan was more kind of accepted amongst most groups, but there was a lot of issues that, that people had against him too. But with Bush, there was a lot, a lot of pushback. Stewart says there's a big, big difference. Donald says they are different in my opinion. Um, Jalen says, I can't say. Grayson says, yes. Uh, Ziga says, I watched Slumdog Millionaire movie many times. I feel like it really describes and shows social problems in a proper light. It should be obligatory to watch it in schools. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that Slumdog Millionaire is an amazing movie and it does make a huge, huge point on the different classism and social structures within uh, those societies. Um, Anthony says, me, rioters, uh, and, and looters are in a different group. Sam Leach says, of course there is. It's just hard to see which one is more common right now. That's a good point, Sam. And that's what I was saying by there's a lot of conflation because the media is showing a lot of look at the rioters, look at the looters. But the majority of protests that are happening are peaceful. The majority of them are people that are just pushing for social change. So if you look at the instances of violence compared to the instances of nonviolence, it's not even comparable. So like I said, if you're watching media, they may show more of the sultry, crazy parts. Oh my God, look, they broke into a store, but they may not show thousands of people marching and singing and holding hands and, and helping each other out and being there for each other. So there's a lot of, I think, um, misinformation being tossed around. Going back to that point, uh, going back to the other points here, why not all lives matter instead of black lives matter? So this is another thing that a lot of people have been bringing up. You, you like, if you're someone in here, you might have heard someone say "all lives matter" in response to "Black Lives Matter," and I wanted to kind of talk about both of those. And you know, I, I don't know how many of you guys have heard that analogy before, but think about it like this: Imagine uh, you're standing there with someone, and there's a house on fire, and you said, "Hey, we need to put this fire out. Let's get water and put this fire out because this house is on fire." And someone were to respond, yeah, that house is on fire, but all these houses could be on fire. So I care about all these houses just as much as you care about that house. And you respond to them, yes, but this is the house that's on fire right now. So we should put this one out. That's the message and the idea behind Black Lives Matter. We're looking at how uh, black people in America are are facing to the highest degree a lot of these systemic cha uh, challenges, right? Uh, education, access to education, poverty, um, drugs, crime, um, lack of health care, lack of access to health, health food stores and all these different things that they're called uh, food deserts in a lot of areas when people don't have access to health, uh, not health, a lot of access to food stores. So I think black people end up being uh, the ones affected the, at the highest rates across all these different systems. So when people say Black Lives Matter, a lot of that is in regards to how black people day to day live in fear of the police. They have to teach their kids to constantly be aware of how to act around police. There's always a sense of nervousness or fear. And if you look back to the earlier days, I was watching a video here, uh, and I'll link it in the description of this video, uh, which kind of walks through the history of racism. And look, there were a lot of things I learned about the 60s and the 70s, Martin Luther King and the marches that I didn't even know about. One interesting fact I learned is that um, um, a lot of people uh, believe and know that um, the the mass shooting that was in Texas, um, uh, not in Texas, I'm sorry, La the Las Vegas shooting was one of the worst mass shootings in American history, right? People say it's the worst, but in the 1920s, um, there was a, a, a massacre where white people were going to black businesses and black stores and they were just burning it down and they were killing people and lynching them. And the number of people that were killed were around 300 or so. So that actually was one the, the biggest mass massacre and mass mass tragedy in American history there uh, on American soil like that. So that was not something I ever ever learned before. And, and you don't really hear those things because it does tie to the racist kind of history of America. America. It's something that a lot of people say, this doesn't exist anymore. Oh, we're past that. Oh, America wasn't racist. But if you look into the history and you see the struggles that immigrants had, the struggles that black people had, the struggles that, you know, non 
traditional people who were who fit the mold at the time who fit the mold of the world which was at the time we're talking 20s 30s 40s 50s 60s 70s 80s and 90s into now it's a lot of it was white middle class people who who kind of were more advantage in that sense so when we talk about that systemic injustice guys when people say all lives matter Ideally, what they're just doing is they're dismissing the fact that, hey, there are real problems that are affecting this community the most. And people are speaking up about it and they're saying, well, everyone, everyone has problems and that's it. The conversation ends there. So it's important to not fall into the rhetoric, I would say, of all lives matter because you're not aiming to solve anything. You're not aiming to address these issues. Instead, you're, you're really more aiming to kind of quiet people and to show them that, well, why, why, do, why does one group of people matter, right? So don't fall into that rhetoric of saying all lives matter, I would say, because I think a lot of people say it and use it, and they're not aware that um, what you're doing is you're dismissing the struggle and the, the climb up the ladder that I think a lot of black people feel like they're constantly facing day to day. Uh, Livy says, also, there are always bad seeds, but not all police are bad. Livy, yeah, you make a good point. And I was listening to a Chris Rock, uh, the comedian, uh, and he made this point. He said that, hey, if you have um, uh, a few bad apples, let's say a few bad apples that are rotten, are you going to put that into your, you can, I forgot the joke. I forgot how he says it, but a few bad apples will ruin uh, the cake you're making. So, you know, like you can't, saying hey we have a few bad apples in an in an area where it's so important for all the apples to be good is a real problem think about it like this imagine if a uh um an airline said yeah we have a few bad pilots you know but you know like the rest of the pilots are good would you ever feel safe flying on a plane with a few bad pilots no every pilot must be up to standard you can't have an environment in a system where you have bad bad people bad apples in that case and so that's why there's such a huge huge push to make sure that it isn't just hey there's a few bad apples in the police every police officer needs to be up to code up to standard and follow those protocols i want to see what some of you guys are saying and there's a lot of conversation here and guys if you have questions if you disagree with something i say if you want to add to something i say jump in the chat here remember this this chat and this this live stream is not a time for us to argue and fight it's a time for us to express our opinions to talk through ideas to learn about where other people are coming from Liv lizzie livy says um so i'm concerned because like some schools are firing the police and so i feel like if a bunch of schools do that they're going to be a lot of school shootings that's a really good point livy so the reason for my understanding why a lot of schools are letting go of police officers is because um a lot of times when schools have police officers there officers there um it can it can create a president president precedence 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 i forgot the word president it can create a setting <laughs> in create a setting where um pe kids are on high alert kids may not feel safe kids may feel kids may feel like scared right it's like i remember in my high school when they started bringing in metal detectors it 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 upped the level of worry and fear it's like is something wrong am i going to get hurt so um, I think the idea of replacing police officers in school with uh, social workers, with people that can talk to the kids, is that if you create more opportunities for the kids to talk through what's going on, to have somewhere to turn, you can reduce the rate of people that may potentially cause harm because they have a counselor to talk to, they have a school therapist, they have a social worker, a group in there. That's, I believe, the idea that, that people are leading towards when it comes to... Um, removing some of the police and things like that in schools. Scott says, I feel like the all lives matter is just an excuse used to ignore or not be active about racism because it's uncomfortable or they don't want to get involved. Scott, yeah, I agree. I agree too. I've had a lot of conversations with people in the last week um, who have posted things like all lives matter. And when I, I, and like, this is anecdotal. This is just my own experience. I can't say this is all across the board, but anytime I engage in a deeper conversation, they never really seem interested in addressing the systemic problems. So if someone says, yeah, well, all lives matter, and I say, okay, well, what are some of the systemic issues you think are affecting all lives here, and what can we do to fix them? They kind of don't respond. They don't really have anything to say. So a lot of times it's said, all lives matter said in response to Black Lives Matter, and it doesn't seem like there's much direction to it. Uh, Grayson says, I hate it when teachers want to shove their beliefs down kids' throats. Kids should have their own opinions. I agree, Grayson. I think that teachers are people too. And sometimes teachers do blend their personal opinion along with their teaching style. I think that's that's 
the nature of being a teacher. Um, but it's important for teachers to also hear students out, to hear what they have to say, um, and even to discuss these issues with them. Modern says, yeah, I disagree with gun, gun control because I like to go hunting and target practice, so it makes me mad when people do gun control rallies. I hear you on that, Modern Bro. Um, me personally, I would argue against... Um, I, I, I'm, I'm an advocator against hunting. I don't agree with hunting target practice. I have no problem with, but, but hunting, cause just because I don't believe in killing or harming animals. But, um, I, I understand where you're saying that it can be agitating for you if this is something you like. And there are people that are protesting against it. Of course, we're never going to like when someone is fighting against something that we like and something that we want to do. I think the best thing for us to do is instead of getting angry and dismissing is to reflect on our behavior, say, what is it that I'm doing that maybe people are upset with? Uh, is this the right thing to be doing? Is there a way I can be doing this more ethically? Those are the questions we should be asking. Sam Leach says, I think it's silly to say all lives matter in response to black lives matter, but I think it makes sense if you're saying in response to BLM supporters justifying killing other innocents. Yeah, Sam, I, I understand what you're saying there. I think that this idea that BLM supporters are justifying killing other innocents, um, I mean, I, 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 maybe you might be talking about specific individuals. I don't, I don't really know. And are there specific individuals that are part of the actual BLM movement that are advocating for this? If there are, Sam, share some resources. I'd love to check it out. Um, but I think that your distinction might lie with a small group of people. I, I would probably think it's a very small group of people that are arguing for the most radical things, which is like kill people or anything like that. I want to jump back in here. Oh, wrong. Uh, where are we? There we are. Uh, I want to walk through these points because we're actually moving through this quickly time time wise. Hamish, thank you so much for the five pound um, donation to the Innocence Project. Hamish, uh, I know you said that you're low on money, um, but it, it does mean a lot. It is a it is a really really important project that that I myself am supporting. By the way, guys, for every donation that you guys make to this organization, I'm gonna match it. So Hamish donated five pounds, so I'm gonna match that whatever that equivalent is in dollars. I'm gonna match that too. So if you'd like to donate to the Innocence Project as well, feel free to do that, and I will match you on that uh, donation. Everyone has equal opportunities in America and racism doesn't exist anymore. I'll move to this one, although it's a big, heavy, heavy one. I'll move through it a little bit quicker. When people say everyone has equal opportunities in America and that racism doesn't exist anymore, I think, I think the simple thing there is simply just to educate people on the history, educate people on the policies that exist, and educate how those two intersect. So something like um, access to quality education is a systemic uh, it falls into systemic racism because, um, and I'll explain what, it, what, what racism means and, and how that's different from something like being prejudiced or being hateful to someone else. But um, something like the education system where there was something called redlining where uh, black people weren't allowed to buy houses and banks and businesses weren't willing to sell it to, to black families. So black families were excluded from purchasing land in different areas and they could only purchase in poorer areas where there was less development, less stores, less business. Because of that, a lot of generational wealth didn't travel to um, the people of this generation, whereas in white families where they could purchase land and they could go to college early on, uh, whereas black people weren't allowed to go to college, they had more generational wealth. So for every, I believe it's for every $100 that a white family has, on average, a black family has $5 in terms of that generational wealth because their ancestors, ancestors, their grandparents maybe, were able to go to college and purchase land, whereas black people weren't allowed to. So... Uh, all that is to say that there is these systemically racist systems that exist because they end up targeting uh, groups of people, usually classes of people and races of people. So that's an example when people say, oh, racism doesn't exist anymore. Well, we need to really understand what racism means. So when people say everyone has an equal chance, well, if you look at history and you look at what people were denied access to, that has an upfolding effect to today. That has an upfolding effect to how people have access to different things. Um, if you look, there was a research study done, I believe it was by The Truth, which said that um, Newport, Newport, the cigarette company, would intentionally open up, uh, you know, like sell cigarettes and sell lots and lots of cigarettes in black poor communities because they knew that um, they can target them and they knew that they were an easy person to kind of get hooked and addicted to buying cigarettes. You look at the same thing and you see the same thing with liquor stores. Liquor companies did the exact same thing. So it's more a matter of um, racial groups end up being targeted 
um, by companies, by corporations, by government programs that end up holding them back. And this is something that's happened throughout the decades leading till today. So let's move into the next point there, guys. And that is this. I, I mentioned racism and people might be thinking, what is racism? What, you know, like if, if, um, if, if I go up to, if a black person goes up to a white person and, and calls them a honky, is, is it racist? Well, that's a good question. Racism ultimately is these three things, are these three things. Prejudice towards someone, meaning you don't like them for the color of their skin, uh, where they come from, the language they speak. Social power. Um, that group, does that group have social power? Um, are there communities of the, that group? Um, do they have the ability to um, practice freely and do whatever they want? Uh, can they travel to their neighborhood safely? Do they, are they the people that generally make up the churches, the stores, the community, the, you know, the, 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 the people in the town? Are, are, are they the dominant social group? Do they have that power and legal authority? Um, Who's in charge? Who's in charge? Who's making the laws? Who's passing the bills? Who's determining what's right and what's wrong? Racism is a mix of those three things. A lot of times when people mention things like reverse racism and they say, oh, a black person was racist to a white person, what they ultimately really mean is that black person may have been prejudiced towards that white person. They may not have liked them because of the color of their skin, but that black person doesn't maintain that social power and they don't usually maintain or they're not part of the, the dominant class or group of people that maintain legal authority. So it's important to know what racism means. When people speak on racism, that's ultimately what they mean. It doesn't mean you said a, a racist comment and that's the end of it. It's recognizing that racism is a structural system. It encompasses prejudice, social, social power, and legal authority. So if you look at how these different systems are set up in this country, the education system, the healthcare system, the prison system, they can be systemically racist because the people that have the dominant power and the people who are at the bottom tier suffering the most from it end up being a racial class, black people. I want to hear what some of you guys have to say because I know that people have different opinions on what racism means. So let's do a chat poll here. Um, in your mind... Um, what do you believe the word racist means? What do you believe racism is? I'm curious to hear what you have to say. I shared what um, what I what I've seen different scholars refer to, which is those three points to it, um, versus just being prejudiced. But I'm curious, what do you guys believe racism to be? Um, Hamish says Newport, that company sponsored an event I went to. We got all caps from them. Uh, Stewart says you must be joking. He did the equivalent of hide in the basement during a pandemic and protest against racism. Uh, Diego says racism is the next level of bullying. That's a good point, Diego. Cheesy says, and I completely understand that the only thing I don't get is uh, police not having guns because of the laws. Uh, then criminals won't follow the laws and it can cause problems. That's an interesting point, Livy. I think that um, police not having guns because of the laws. Yeah, I mean, I, I personally believe that we do need... Uh, a division of police with weapons, police with guns, so that they can protect. If there are other people with guns, if they do need to stop a robbery or crime, I do think we need that. I think a lot of the times when people mention the term like de defund the police, ultimately what they mean is that um, the police, like, look, I just discovered that the New York police budget is, I believe, the 33rd highest military budget in the world or in the US or something crazy like that, like the New York police budget. So, where is all that money going? Is it going towards police? Is But is it going towards training? Is it going towards uh, mental health training? Is it going towards de-escalation training? And a lot of times it's not. So a lot of money in police budgets, especially in America, is being squandered in different areas. And people are arguing that, hey, let's redirect that towards mental health training. Let's redirect that towards social workers. Because sometimes it may make sense to send a social worker into a situation than a police officer with a gun. Um, like I said, but I'm not the policymaker to determine that, but I understand the idea of, uh, defunding a singular area and then redistributing it to other areas. Um, Zika says, uh, I'm a gourmet. So one of the things I really can do is stop eating meat. If I'm unable to do something, I make sure to do it the way that it hurts the environment the least. So you're a gourmand. 
maybe that means that you you're a connoisseur of food and stuff but you can be a connoisseur of food and, and not eat meat there's plenty of, of things to do that but zig if you want shoot me a message and i can talk to you and share some cool recipes and things like that if you're interested in trying some meatless meals um okay let's see what some more of you guys said uh rage master says racism has got to stop uh meat bag says neglecting or harassing a targeted group um uh, nigel williams says the skin color modern bro says um Judging people, bullying, punishing because of the race or religion. Rage Master says we need to support people not uh, not other than, not other than skin color, what language they speak, uh, who also have to support people with disabilities as well. Let's take a water break. Sam Leach says. I believe racism is simply discrimination based on race. If we want to be equal, we should start treating all cases of racial prejudice the same, no matter the color. Um. Okay, I understand what you mean there. Grayson says, people always said racism will turn back into segregation. Um, look, it, it, there are some schools of thought that um, racism can inspire segregation where people, you know, like um, exclude other races, other groups out of clubs and things like that or organizations. Cheesy says, there is no Cold War. Why is America spending mili on the military so high? That's a good point, Cheesy. America has a huge, huge military industrial complex. And some of the richest, uh, sell the richest people who who make steel, who make ammunition, who who buy and sell arms. They benefit from war. They benefit from making weapons. So that's why I think uh, you know, like, and a lot of those people tend to fund politicians. So, uh, Rage Master says interracial couple, of course. Grace says people always said racism. Oh, I read that already. Dave Video says racism is more than just not liking a person because of their race. It's also about dominating over them any way possible, such as slurs, rules, treatments, and stereotypes. Hamie says rudeness, arrogance, stupidity, <laughs> ignorance, major upset. That's racism. I like that. I like that, Hamish. Uh, Austin says, all right, let's go back into it. Uh, some people say that we should get rid of the police, which I completely disagree with. I can't imagine this country without police. There would be so much more crime. Yeah, Austin, uh, I'm trying to learn more about the argument people are making in terms of completely abolishing the police. I I don't really feel I don't I don't know if that's the right way to go about it, but I'm trying to like learn, okay, what is their perspective? If they abolish police, how do they feel we can handle these situations? What's another way? So I'm I'm open to learning a little bit more about that, but I I'm not fully sold on abolishing the police. I do agree with the idea of maybe defunding and redistributing uh money to different places, but okay. Cheesy says, uh, anarchism is an ideology of moral of morale is high, then there is no crime. Morale is the key fundamental of an anarchy. Yeah, I agree on that. I think that when they're, when people feel disadvantaged, when people feel abused by the system and taken advantage, if people feel like they have no access to opportunity, they turn to anarchy. Okay, a Blue Horse says, what do the protesters want? Do I owe them something, money, what? <laughs> That's a good question, Blue Horse. What do the protesters want? Well, I think that, um, I'll pull it back up here. And I think that the protesters are pulling together a lot of different things. And I would say these are just, was this 10? 10 points that the protesters are trying to bring attention to. Um, how people in America are struggling on systemic levels against, you know, like against the system. The system which is there to, supposed to provide for them and help them and assist them and, and help them pr uh, prosper in any way possible. Uh, a lot of these these, these uh, setups here, poverty, surveillance, lack of health care are actually hurting people. So it isn't people protesting for money. It's people protesting for awareness and social change. Okay, let's jump into the next point here, guys, and that's this, pandering. This is something that happens a lot, and I think the reason why this happens a lot is because it's very easy for us to fall into this party line divide, to fall into the nature of which side are you on? Are you red or are you blue? Are you Democrat or are you Republican? Are you a liberal or are you a conservative? You know, we feel this desire to always push for what side are you? And for me, I always, when people ask me what side I'm on, I tell them I'm on the side of peace. I choose the side of peace. Whichever side is arguing to help people, to understand them and to work with them, that's a side I wanna be on. That may be right, that may be left. That's up to the political parties to, to, to accommodate to my desire for peace. And a lot of you guys know that in America, you know, one of the popular sayings is with liberty and justice for all, right? And this was something I heard, I believe it was Van Jones uh, described, that 
standing up for justice is not a left issue, right? If you think about social justice and fighting and pushing for um, change in America, for, um, you know, the right to do all these different things, the access to healthcare, you know, taking money out of politics, all these different things, it's not only a left issue. And people think that liberty, which is, hey, I don't want the government intruding on my rights. I want to do what I want to do without the government telling me what to do. Liberty is not just a right issue. You know, you guys have to understand this. I wrote it here. Politicians are influenced by money and power. That includes politicians who are Democrats, and that includes politicians that are Republicans. Politicians, for the most part, have corporate donors. These are people that fund their campaigns, that give them money to run, that help keep them in power. And a lot of times, politicians end up doing the bidding of their highest donors, right? Corporations that donate to them, super PACs, billionaires. This is something that if, if you guys have been following kind of the mainstream political um, kind of, you know, scope of it all. Bernie Sanders is an example of someone. And Andrew Yang are two people, um, Elizabeth Warren to a degree, but... Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth and, and uh, Andrew Yang were two people that were kind of really putting a huge emphasis on taking money out of politics, making it so that politicians shouldn't be able to be bought. Because what ends up happening is that us as the people end up fighting with each other. Oh, you're a Republican, I hate you. Oh, you're a Democrat, you're a liberal, I hate you. We fight with each other while the politicians, you know, still push policy, they work with each other, but they're all just taking money. They're not always operating in the interest of the people. They're not always operating in the, in the sense of liberty or justice. They're operating in sometimes in the sense of their own pockets. So like an example of that might be if you look at the stimulus package that was pushed. Look at the stimulus package that was pushed. Everyone in America got $1,200 for the first stimulus package, right? Corporations got hundreds of millions of dollars in bailouts. And the reason for that is because these corporations fund the politicians. People are struggling. People can't pay their bills. People can't put food on their table. And ideally, the government should have provided another stimulus package to the people. People should have gotten more money to help them get through while they're unemployed, while they're sick, while they can't go to work. And the politicians aimed in favor of corporations again. So this is a major reoccurring thing. This isn't a left or right issue, guys. Suffering exists on the human level, not the party level. People on the right, people who are conservative, people who are Republican still struggle with issues. Uh, they still struggle with access to health care. They still struggle with poverty and, and wages, uh, wage, wage injustice. They still struggle with mass incarceration. People on the left also struggle with things like surveillance and government overreach and, and um, you know, policing within their neighborhoods. You have to remember, guys, don't get sucked into... Uh, don't get sucked into party politics. And Grayson, you made a good point there. Grayson said, Donald Trump fixed everything Obama did wrong. Grayson, that's part of what I'm talking about too. Trump has done a lot of things that have hurt this country, but Obama did a lot of things that hurt this country as well. I think that there's no perfect politician. There's no perfect solution. There's no perfect answer to a lot of these things. But you have to recognize that it's like, if the politician is taking money from corporations and donors, then chances are they're going to have a big say in what they do. Um, you know, like Grayson, Grayson mentioned Obama there. Obama did a lot of things, right? I'll mention one of them. Um, in 2008, uh, after the stock market crash, Obama um, bailed out all these big corporations right? American tax dollars went to cor towards corporations, right? Obama, for example, ran on a populist message when he first started, and then he moved more towards kind of this centrist corporate politician, right? Trump is really no different. Trump, I would argue, has done a lot worse and has been far worse. Um, but look, recent, when, when Trump took the picture, I'm sure you guys saw Trump holding the Bible like really awkwardly, when Trump went to hold the Bible and take that picture, there were people peacefully protesting outside of the White House. And Trump, uh, William Barr, under Trump's command, had pushed for the government, uh, pushed for the police officers to start, start shooting tear gas at the, the completely innocent protesters to push them away so Trump can go do his photo op. To me, that's an overreach of power, a massive overreach of power. That's tyranny in play. So Trump is, is, is not a good dude. He's not, I would say that he's not someone that, um, 
He's not someone that's definitely fighting for peace and justice. I think that he's stirring up a lot of issues there. But this isn't to say that, oh, Trump bad, orange man bad, he's the only thing that's bad. I think our political system is struggling. And, and it's a lot of the issues that I mentioned earlier, and I'll bring it back up, guys, a lot of these issues are not being addressed by left and right. You know, and the way that we are going to address them is by talking about them, about learning. It's about learning about the history and it's about really understanding what change looks like. That suffering exists for all people. It's not a left or right thing. But in the interest of learning more about you guys, because I definitely want to learn more about you, I'll do another chat poll here. Where do you guys consider yourself politically? If you had to give yourself a political label or if you had to give yourself a political title, party side you agree with, where do you place yourself politically? Um, You may not really know. You may tell yourself, I don't place myself in anything. And that's fine too. I'm curious to know where you guys stand. For myself, where I stand now, I would probably identify myself as a social democrat. And by that, that means that I believe in... uh, a capitalist system with government regulation for corporations, right? I don't believe in corporations kind of developing monopolies and and seizing power to the highest degree. I believe in taking money out of politics. I don't support super PACs or corporate donors. And I think that uh, a social democracy means that we have social programs that um, similar to Sweden and Norway and Finland and a lot of these other countries that have these social programs like Medicare, uh, schooling, uh, you know, all these different things that help provide for the people, help take the the basic necessities of life off their plate so they can focus on developing a prosperous life, family, and career. So that's kind of where I stand. I'd probably put myself in a sock dem, uh, social d- democrat uh, position, but I'm curious where you guys stand. Anthony says, I have no political opinion. And look, this isn't to say any anyone anything, anything, oh, I'm this, I'm this, that one is right, one is wrong. I think that for me, my ideas of if I'm aiming for peace, I feel like that is the strongest argument for peace. Um, Grayson says, I would consider myself a Republican and conservative. Cheesy says centrist. Uh, Jalen says the system was built on a bad foundation. I agree with that, Jalen. I think he made a good point. Blue Horse Shoe says capitalist. Uh, Stuart says, uh, Josh has talked about that on the stream before. Oh, but what did I talk about on the stream before? Um... Oh, Blue Horse says the CCP has a big influence on both parties as they are embedded with many global corporations that want to do some, something used labor in China. Yeah, I mean, our dependency on foreign countries for, for production is, is is scary because it's like if the foreign countries turn against us, we lose access to products, we lose access to business, we lose access to a lot. Um I don't mean to start anything, I just thought Trump is a good president. Yeah, no problem, Grayson. Look, like I said, um, This isn't like, you're wrong, you're right. This is more about learning about each other. And like I said, all of this is to recognize that there are problems in the system. There are lots and lots of problems in the system. And I mentioned some of them. There are systemic problems. There are systemically systemically racist problems that exist. Economic challenges that that are there. Um, Blue Horse says, Sweden, Norway are very capitalist. Yeah, I agree. They're they're very capitalist countries. Um, Sam Lee says, center right, but always open to having my mind changed. Yeah, I agree. I think we should all be open to learning and having our minds changed. I think it's a really important thing. Rage Master says, in between both Democrat and Republican, it depends, but Republican for the most part. Cool, cool. Sam Leach says, what we forget is that politicians are humans and humans aren't exactly perfect. You nailed it on the head there, man. You nailed it on the head. Grayson says, George Washington founded the Republican Party. Did he? I'm not really sure. I don't. Were there established political parties back then? Or did it come after Washington? I honestly don't know. I I really should probably look into that. (laughs) Um, Let's see. Um, Cheesy says, Sweden and Norway have welfare benefits, though. This results in a more socialist system. Yeah, I agree. Like, they can be capitalist enterprise system uh, countries, but they have very, very strong safety nets, like Cheesy said. And that's why I think we should lean more towards that model. Uh, like, Medicare for all, I think, is a simple thing that everyone in the country should have access, should have the ability, should be guaranteed the to the health care that they deserve, right? I think that that would create a healthy and stable society. Um, Blue Horse says Europe is mostly social democrats, but not socialists. There's a difference. Do people understand that? I think I think I think people understand that. People throw the word social, and they hear the word social, and they uh, social democrats, and they think uh, socialist uh, socialist. But I think not a lot of people may understand that difference. But um, I would hope some people do. Yeah, Jalen, thank you for sharing the political compass test. That's a really really great test to take. I think uh, it's, it helps you really understand where you stand. All right, let me read through a few more comments. I'm going to get to the last few points here, but. Um, 
Hamish says, there is a problem of getting into bad fights if I talk about politics. Hamish, I hear where you're coming from on that. I, I think that we've had a pretty um, decent conversation, all of us. Wouldn't you guys agree that we've kind of talked about things and had, had a decent conversation along the way? Um, let's jump into the next point here. So we talked about that with liberty and justice for all, that liberty and justice are v- uh, values that whether you're left or right, those are things we should fight for. We should fight against injustice in this country, and we should fight for the protection of Americans against the government. So these are the questions I want to ask you guys. Do you feel like, are you on the side of peace? Are you guys on the side of peace? Do you feel that your political beliefs aim towards uh, a system that is helpful and kind and peaceful and inspires people to move forward without, you know, like holding them down in some kind of way. What does peace look like? And I personally believe if we're working towards peace, that does mean addressing and calling out some of these broken systems. That does mean um, recognizing that, hey, look, there's a history of racism and violence and sexism in, in our country. And we can't deny it. And we can't pretend like it doesn't exist anymore because it all leads up to today. The next question I ask you is, what does leadership look like? Some of you, I I think Grayson believes that Trump is the embodiment now of of, of a leader in this situation. Some of you may feel like he's not doing the right things. He's not, he's not bringing people together. He's not um, inspiring the country. He's being very divisive in his language. So it's really, really important for us to think, what does leadership look like? When we think of a president, when we think of a a leader in the country, uh, politicians, when we think of mayors and governors and, and, and local community organizers, what does that leadership look like? I want you guys to really, really think about that. Hey, Atlanta boy, we covered, we covered the all lives matter thing earlier, man. You can watch the replay later to get an idea of what I'm talking about that. Next thing I want to ask is this, how can we be more empathic? I think a lot of people carry this, oh, you know, um, a lot of people carry this, you'll pick yourself up by your bootstraps type of mentality. And in saying that, you really are ignoring the systems in place that are causing people to struggle. Like I said, debt is one of them, right? Uh, People people who try to take out mortgages end up going in debt and they can't provide for their family. People have student loans, people have uh, medical bills, people have legal fees. There's a lot that may be holding people back and making them really, really struggle in that sense. So how can we be more empathic? How can we listen to each other's stories? How can we learn about um, where people are coming from, what they're dealing with, what their struggle has been like? How can we inspire people to succeed? And how can we stand up to injustice? This is one of the biggest questions I want you guys to really, really think about. How can we stand up to injustice? I think that the only way we can stand up to injustice is to first recognize that history and even the present is filled with points of injustice. It's filled with situations where groups of people are disadvantaged or people are being taken advantage of by politicians, by corporations, by people in their own community, guys. Um, it is incredibly, yeah, look, I, I want to say this cause I see some people posting. If you're going to post all lives matter, if some, you're going to be someone who posts all lives matter, guys, I covered this earlier. Um, uh, when people say all lives matter, make it, make a point. Don't just say it cause it doesn't mean anything. Make a point with it. If you're going to say all lives matter, explain, I believe all lives matter because these are the systemic issues that I'm against that affect all lives. Like explain, but just saying it, it's not, doesn't really do much. So I would say come up with something rather than nothing because you just kind of look silly saying it and then that's it. It just seems kind of silly to me. But as I said, guys, um, how can we stand up to injustice? That's the question I want us to think about. Now, like I said before, I'm going to pull it up here. This is the Innocence Project, guys. The Innocence Project's mission is to free the staggering number of innocent people who remain incarcerated and to bring reform to the system responsible for their unjust imprisonment. Guys, um... No, Atlanta boy, I have no problem with people speaking their minds. I Like I said, but I want them to make an actual point. I don't think anyone who says all lives matter actually makes a point. But the Innocence Project is basically an organization that is helping to provide legal defenses uh, for people who can't afford it that are wrongfully imprisoned. Look, the, America has the highest prison rate in the entire world. And a lot of times people go to jail for victimless crimes. They can't afford lawyers. They have bad legal teams. Um, you know, like there's a lot of evidence that's, falsified, a lot of information that's falsified. So the Innocence Project helps 
Um, the Innocence Project is meant to help people kind of have some kind of legal defense, have a better legal defense to help clear their names, to bring them out of prison, to reunite them with their families. So if you guys look over there on the, on the top there, uh, instead of Super Chats, you have the ability to donate to the Innocence Project. I chose that as the stream to donate to. Um, yeah, Ethi, I agree, man. And the War on Drugs. We need to do that ASAP, man. Um, the Innocence Project I, is an organization that I'm supporting. And for everyone that donates, I saw Hamish donated a, a five pounds uh, super chat earlier or donation earlier. For anyone that donates, I'm going to match your guys' donations. So if you want to donate to the Innocence Project, just donate. It'll pop up here in the chat and I'll know. Um, but I'm going to match anyone's donations in here. Um, so guys, you know, feel free to do that. But on that note, guys, I bring us to our mindful moment. Now, one thing I want to say, guys, actually, before we get to the mindful moment, let's just say this, guys. Right now, after this live stream, I'm jumping over on Instagram. We're keeping the conversation going. If you want to be part of the Instagram after party, head on over to Instagram. Follow me over there, guys. I'd love to chat with you guys. I'd love to have a conversation with you. Let's talk about what's on your mind. What are you thinking about? If you haven't already, also hit the thumbs up on this live stream. Hit the thumbs up if you guys haven't already. I think it'll be super, super helpful um, if you guys rewatch the stream, if you missed some points, especially you Atlanta boy, rewatch the part where I talk about all lives matter. Um, but yeah, follow me over on Instagram, guys. It'll be super, super fun. Now we are here for the mindfulness moment. <clears throat> guys, we covered some really heavy stuff today. We covered some of the um, conflated ideas that people are spreading. Racism doesn't exist anymore. We're all equal. All lives matter. You know, like all these different ideas you hear floating around. Um, we talked a lot about some of the systemic issues that exist. We kind of broke down and discussed racism and what does racism look like differently than prejudice, being prejudiced here. So um, I'd love to get your guys' feedback. If anyone that's watching afterwards, leave a comment and let me know. But what I want us to do now is this. Like I said, if each of us aims to work towards peace in this world for everyone, we need to really step up it and, and really learn as much as we can so we can be educated and then teach and share and have those heavy conversations because it's in talking with others that we can learn about their experiences. So I have my meditation bell here. And what I want us all to do is to close our eyes. Everyone in here, close your eyes. And together we're going to just take a brief 10 second meditation moment, mindfulness moment. Hamish, thank you again for the second five pound super chat. I'll donate 10 pounds uh, along with your 10 pounds that you donated, donated as well. Let's close our eyes together, guys. And let's think about the suffering that exists in this world because we can think about peace and we can think I want everyone to be happy, but we first need to connect with the suffering of others. We need to recognize that there's a roof over our head. You're sitting there on your phone or on your computer right now. But there are people out there that are struggling, that don't know how they're going to put food on their table, don't know how they're going to provide for their families, that are dealing with the system working against them. I want all of us to connect to the suffering of others right now, to recognize that there are people that are struggling. And the best thing we can do is to be there for them, to listen and to help them when we see that they need help. So all of us, Right now, let's come together. Let's connect to the suffering of others. There are many people in this world that need our kindness and our help, guys. Let's do our best to be there for them. Now, what I want you to do, for, thank you guys for being part of the live stream. Um, I'm going to link up a video over, over here afterwards um, for you guys to check out. So check out those resources and make sure to follow me over on Instagram so you can join the after party. But guys, if you can, learn more about the Innocence Project. Learn what they're doing. I think it's an amazing organization doing an amazing thing. If you can, donate to them as well. Thank you guys for being a part of this live stream. These were heavy topics and thank you for having a civil open conversation here. I appreciate every single one of you guys. On that note, guys, I'll catch you next time. As always, love and peace. See you guys then.